I'm, uh, it's, it's being polished right now. So yes, I do. Guys, I, I want to I take this time, guys, because, uh, man, I, I could never do this without my team. And uh, today, I know I was planning on doing an open workout, but more importantly than that, I, I kind of want to share my story with you guys. Because I do believe it's, it's more important that you guys see. You guys are going to watch me fight Saturday anyways, right? I want to I, I wanna personalize this, this day for you. And I've been really... Nice to meet you, brother. What's your name? Luke. Luke. Did you read the book? I did. What would you think of the book? I liked it. It's my favorite book. Yeah? What, 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 did you, uh, <laughs> what did you like about it besides the gold medal? What was, uh, what was about this, this book that, that, that inspired you? I like how you told your story from the start, like where you came from and how you managed to grow up to earn your medal in the Olympics. Yeah, absolutely, guys. And this is the thing for me, guys. I know I'm a clown, whatever, but you know what? I'm having fun. At the end of the day, you know what I really care about? I care about, I care about our future. I care about those kids that are coming up that grew up just like me. As you read the book, I'm, I'm a son. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of seven kids raised by a single mother, born in the ghetto streets of South Central LA, and I am here today to be able to share my story with you guys. No, you guys watch. I want you guys to really pay attention because this, is, this may hit some of you guys. As a little kid, guys, my, my dad was a drug addict. My dad was in and out of jail. It got to the point when you read this book, it talks about how my dad pretty much sold our Christmas toys for crack money. This is the guy, this is the, this is the bloodstream that I come from. But on the flip side, I had a mother who was courageous, who came to this country, and maybe not the most political way. Yeah, she came here, but you have to understand, man, it's a war zone out there. My mom came here to this country to live the American dream, to have freedom. She had one, I'm one of seven kids, raised, raised in circumstances, raised in circumstances that I don't even think here in Chirac could even compare. I was a kid that was malnutrition. I was a kid that I'd be, I'd be lucky to eat twice a day. At the age of 17, I pretty much, I found the sport of wrestling first. I, I was a kid, they, they talk about through nature and nurture how somebody is made. And I was made pretty much, when I was growing up, like, we never got Christmas toys. Like, my mom was such a realist with us. Like, hey, listen, guys, you have two shirts, you have uh, a couple pair of pants, you have some shorts. We weren't, we weren't thinking about gangs and violence, we were just thinking about surviving. But something that my mom did to me that's inspired me in my life is she always edified me. It's like, Henry, you are an American. Henry, you are an American. As a little kid, I never, I, I've, I've always took that to heart because... We were poor, and I didn't get it as a little kid. But my whole life changed at the age of nine years old. I'll never forget it. I was watching the 1996 Olympics, walk, watching Michael Johnson shattered and win the world record with his infamous gold shoes. And that changed my life forever. This African-American man, the way he shattered that, the way he, quit, the way he carried that American flag with his infamous gold shoes, it... It changed my perspective forever. I told myself that that day that I would become the best in the world at the Olympic Games. And this is before I even knew what sport. But it's through my mother who says, Henry, you can, you can be anything you want to be. You can be the biggest drug addict in the world. Or you can be an Olympic champion. You can be the president if you'd like. At the, at the age of 10, as a little kid, as you guys grew up in Mexican neighborhoods, they used to make us fight. They used to make us fight for Mexican ice creams. If you're victorious, una palata de chile. So here I was as a little kid fighting for Mexican ice creams, fighting for 50 cents, but it wasn't so much about the treat. To me, it was, so, it was, it was more about having the heart of competition and, and inflicting pain into my, into my opponent, to my peers. Luckily, I found the great sport of wrestling, a sport that changed my life, a sport that gave me an opportunity, and that changed my life forever. As soon as I, as soon as I laced on a pair of wrestling shoes, I said, you know what, I'm going to become the best in the world in this. I had won pretty much every tournament that you guys could probably think about here in America. A kid who was raised without a father, who, a kid who was raised in poverty. At the age of 17, I get a phone call from, from the United States Olympic Committee, and they says, Henry, we want you to become a resident athlete here at the Olympic Training Center. Kind of like the experiment, sort of what they do with China with little kids. You'll take them from their, you'll take them from their homes, and pretty much within eight years, they wanted, to make, they wanted to make me an Olympic champion. Within eight years, I mean, that would mean 2012. But you know what, guys? I had other plans. I knew that in 2008, I said, guys, you guys just give me the resources. My heart, my abilities there. Just give me the resources. I want you guys to get this. On August 19th of 2004, I left home. 
that on August 19th of 2008, that kid with that dream became the youngest Olympic champion in the history of the United States of America. And yes, I am proud. I am proud to be an American. I am proud to be Mexican descent. I am proud to have a gold medal, believe it or not. But you know what's molded me? You know what's made me the person that I am today? It has been adversity. It has been the experiences that's, that's happened in my life. I have never become the victim. I've always been the victor. I have never been bitter, but I've become better because of them. And I'm going to give you guys an example since you guys are MMA fans. Demetrius Johnson, the first time he beat me. Knocked me out in two minutes and 36 seconds. Curled up like a little girl. You guys have any idea what it's like for a fighter to curl up an Olympic champion undefeated to get pounded in front of 25,000 people? You guys have any idea? But you know what? I use that not to be bitter. I use that to be better. Two and a half years later, we defeated the greatest of all time. They didn't, believe me with they didn't believe me at the Olympics, became the youngest in history to ever win an Olympic gold medal. They didn't believe me against the greatest of all time in Demetrius Johnson, beat him. They didn't believe me in, in TJ Dillashaw, and I took him out in 32 seconds. You know what the problem is now? Is now that I'm talking about pound for pound, guess what people are saying? They're kicking me again. They're kicking me again. They're talking, they're talking shit about me. Why does it have to be John Jones? Why does it have to be Daniel Cormier? Why, does it, why can't it be Henry Cejudo? Why? Why? So I want you guys to get this, man. What's made me successful in my life has been these three things that I want you guys to, you know, to take. You guys don't have to listen to anything I said, but I want to leave you guys off with three, these three things that has made me successful in my life. Because I care, guys. Yes, I'm a clown. Yes, whatever you want to call me. But I want you guys to just take these three things. And I call it dream, sacrifice, victory. It all started off when I was a little kid. I was watching, I was watching the 1996 Olympics, seeing Michael Johnson share the world record with his infamous gold shoes, sitting on a damn milk crate and inside of a trailer with the black and white TV, and you had to get the pliers to make sure to change it, make sure you had a hanger to make sure you get the right reception. But that's where that dream started. My uncle was, was one of the biggest drunks in the world. He'd always tell me, like, Henry, Henry. He's like, dream all you want because dreaming doesn't cost a thing. <laughs> but you know what? He's right. Uncle Chucho, gracias. You're right. You're right. What does it cost to dream? Your dream is your imagination. Your dream is your imagination. You can manifest that. But the second thing is probably the most important thing, and it's called sacrifice. Guys, I sacrificed my family. I sacrificed my friends. I had no childhood. I had no childhood. I had no friends in high school. As you read the book, I would eat lunch with the teachers, with the high school teachers. From a, from, from a predominantly Mexican kid to moving over to a, an all-American Caucasian school, I couldn't relate to nobody. I was the only kid at the school bringing a, bringing a hot sauce to school to, to, you know, to, have, to, to eat my burger. Who does that? I sacrificed. I had no friends. I sacrificed everything for that dream. So get this, guys. The bigger the dream, the greater the sacrifice. The sacrifice always has to be greater than the dream in order for you guys to accomplish victory. So if you dream big, sacrifice all, you guys will enjoy victory. Thank you.